This is the Living Wisdom Show, and I'm Patty Paul. Today, my guest once again is my friend Steve Parrish, and Steve is going to be channeling a wonderful, wise, and loving being friend by the name of Eleanor. So, Steve, I invite you, welcome, and Thank you. I invite you to go right ahead and begin your channeling process. Here's Eleanor. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, welcome. Right. I thought so. Uh, um, sorry if we were ready yet. Yes, well, we're doing things just a little differently today, but welcome again. And today, our important topic, as you know, is going to be uh, the principles of chauvinism and the principles of dominion. So I invite you to get started. All right, indeed. To speak about an incredible journey. And one piece of that journey, a piece very common to all of you, very right up and personal and sometimes in your face these days, is the transition from chauvinism to dominion. Part of a much larger journey of coming from God Goddess as a spark of consciousness and moving through the various kingdoms. Reaching the state of being a spiritual human being. Because in that evolutionary step, one of many evolutionary steps, dominion becomes possible as you reach human consciousness. Prior to human consciousness, dominion is not actually even achievable, if you will. And so, you've had a very, very long journey to get here. And part of getting here has been through taking various forms in the mineral kingdom, in the plant kingdom, in the animal kingdom, then reaching the state of being a human animal and then gaining consciousness and growing to become a human being where most of you are now, if you will. Many of you strongly engaged in becoming spiritual human beings. In the face of all that, there are shifts in paradigms as you shift in your evolution. And a paradigm, if that sense is, uh, you might think of it as the set in which you live, what you experience of the world as it is shaped by what's often referred to as raw materials, but your beliefs and your attitudes, your patterns of thought, your patterns of feeling, and your patterns of choice and decision that colors what you see in the world we would say color is literally what you create in your world. But even if you don't believe yet or understand that you actually create your world, it still colors how you see, how you interpret the data of your world, of your daily life as you go through life, as you look at the world, as you encounter, as you engage. Other people other things in your reality. Now, we would pretend that you do in fact create all that is in your reality. That energy in that sense comes from outside of your paradigm, called what you think of as three-dimensional physical reality, and it filters through that energy in its essence, filters through your beliefs and your attitudes, your thoughts and your feelings, your choices and your decisions. Where at first, begins to take what you might think of as resistance, a syrupiness, if you will, just as a want of a way of speaking about mm -hmm. it. Then running through function and finally into form, this physical stuff that you call your world. Within the framework of where you are now, your 
paradigm is largely colored by what we call chauvinism. Now in that sense to understand when we say chauvinism we're not talking about uh, uh, men not liking women. A much bigger picture in that sense. Uh, true chauvinism, the deepest chauvinism that infects each and every one of you in that sense, that colors and shapes the way you respond to your world. And it has certain principles. <laughs> and those principles include that you live in a world of lack and limitation. That there's only so much to go around, often referred to as a pie. There's only so many pieces of pie. And you, as a human being, you need to fight to get that piece of pie. And when you get your piece, you're taking away from someone else. Principles that your value as a human being is based either largely or solely on how well you compete or compare in your world, how well you fight, and how much pie you get. It tells you to ignore your raw materials, to forget them. Beliefs, attitudes, pfft, don't be silly. We'll tell you what to think, we'll tell you what to feel. Matter of fact, most of the time chauvinism tells you not to feel at all. It says that emotion is weak, it's foolish, woman stuff. Don't do it. <laughs> if you absolutely have to do it, then don't let anybody see you do it. This paradigm, this influence of chauvinism has colored your world way more intensely than it was actually intended to do. There are options, there are alternatives, there are other ways of exploring your reality, there are other ways of seeing and interacting with the stuff that you call the world. At this point, perhaps to give a brief history of chauvinism and where it came from, not since to understand that journey we're talking about in the beginning God goddess if you will a spark of consciousness splitting off seeking to gain an understanding of itself always reaching to become more that spark of consciousness if you will entering into what you think of as your universe your three-dimensional universe and taking a form, beginning with the mineral kingdom. That spark of consciousness always seeking to be more, always seeking to expand itself. In time, a very, very long time, stretched past the mineral kingdom and entered the plant kingdom, if you will. That really being the beginning of the principles of chauvinism, because it's the beginning of a sense of rudimentary <laughs> rudimentary <excuse laughs> that <us>. word. <laughs> <laughs> rudimentary consciousness now are we saying plants are alive and they think like you no <laughs> they are alive yes do they have a kind of consciousness yes a kind of consciousness that's limited that's narrow that's appropriate to their kingdom if you will but if you really study the plant kingdom it's incredibly chauvinistic it is constantly at, at war if you will in battle seeking to become more, but seeking that through instinct. Now, instinct is not generally applied to plants, but if you study them closely, you'd be quite amazed just how much of an influence it has. That spark of consciousness, still wanting to become more, reaching and stretching. Reaching the animal kingdom. Their instinct being much more powerful, much more intense, much more uh, uh, operative, as you will, and consciousness as well. Animals having a much greater sense of consciousness, a much greater sense of awareness of their surroundings, about the difference between the animal kingdom and the human kingdom. Animals can feel, they can think, but they are not self-aware. A dog does not know that it's a dog. Mm -hmm. It can love you. 
It can remember you. It can interact with you in many wonderful ways. But it doesn't have a piece of its consciousness that can sit back and think about it being a dog interacting with you. Now, within your natural world, the need for chauvinism to bridge the gap of consciousness, if you will, for instinct to, to be so strongly part of that world, part of that growth, part of that extension, if you will, that expression. Survival of the fittest, it's often called. Mm -hmm. When you became human animals, if you will, coming out of the chimpanzees and beginning to stand erect, but still pretty much driven by instinct, a higher sense of consciousness, absolutely, the beginnings of a sense of self-awareness, just a spark, if you will, making that leap, making that leap in evolution from pure animal to human animal. Growing, changing, stretching, again, long, long span of time to a place where you as human beings became, your next step in the evolution became human beings. Mm, pretty much like you think of yourselves now in that sense. Consciously aware, richly intelligent, very conscious of what's going around you, making and interacting with your world in a way. That was so much more brilliant than anything that had gone before it. And yet within your matrix, within your makeup, still strongly the instinct imprinted in your very DNA carries a lot of influence. From that point on, if you will, from that step up from human animal to human being was the beginning of the next stage of evolution, becoming the spiritual human being. You'd think of it time-wise, essentially what you think of as your modern world. Now, it actually stretches much farther back than that, though uh, it might not be uh, common in consensus, beginning with uh, what was called Lemuria. 90,000 years ago, a little bit more than 90,000 now, 90,010. <laughs> <laughs> a place long since forgotten in your common vernacular in that sense. more commonly known Atlantis, whether you believe in it or not in that sense, uh, ranges of time where you experimented, where you grew, where you changed, where you stretched in your consciousness. Uh, and then the framework of what you think of as modern times, usually beginning with uh, around the, what you'd call the Egyptian times and coming into your, your modern time. incredible spurts of knowledge, incredible leaps of understanding. And throughout all that particular 90,000 years, dominion has been possible. Dominion is a change of paradigm that's possible through consciousness itself. Of course, you see, if there really was only three dimensions, four if you can count time and space, if that really was all that was available, then chauvinism makes a lot of sense. Because from the framework of there's three dimensions and only three dimensions, then the principles of chauvinism are true. There really is lack and limitation. With consciousness, with your ability to think beyond who you are, with your ability to have a part of you that steps back and can think about you as a human being interacting with your world, you opened a doorway, a portal, if you will, through spirituality, through deepening your understanding of who you are, sharpening your spiritual tools, if you will, going meditation, one among many such tools, where you realize and practice the ideas that your consciousness truly can reach outside of your three-dimensional limitations, can reach outside of time and space. 
and in that reaching to gather resource and bring it back and give it form inside of what you think of as three dimensions. Hence the beginning of the possibility of true dominion. And when you compare them to each other, if you will, chauvinism will always go for lack and limitation. Chauvinism will always go for domination. It says you do not create reality. The best you can do is dominate it. It's already there. There's nothing you can do about that. Here's the set of blocks that you get to play with. On your own. All you can do is push the blocks around or move the blocks around. You don't have any influence beyond that. With the advancement of consciousness, with that spark wanting and reaching to be more, when you understand that your consciousness can and does stretch outside of the limitations of a physical world, you gained an understanding and a knowledge of who you really are, the truer you, the more real you, a you that actually does have the ability, though you may not be using it, not just to respond to a reality that's already created, but to literally create reality itself. Now, we would suggest that, in fact, you've been doing that all along. But the mechanisms with which you do that were largely unconscious and subconscious and instinctually driven. And in stepping up to become spiritual human beings, you can create a mastery of understanding and experience of literally generating reality from scratch, if you will. Throughout this time of this particular evolution, individuals have always been working on this, and certain individuals at various times have indeed reached that level of consciousness. Some of them you've given names, like Buddha and Christ, those with <laughs> the press attached, if you will. But there have been many individuals throughout time who have mastered this particular journey, who have created maps of understanding your world is at a very big crossroads. You are right on the edge of another incredible evolutionary leap. And in that sense, you've reached a place where you've caught up to yourself in science and technology, where your communication literally is global. And out of that information spreading throughout the world, another level, if you will, of possibility, of understanding, of stretching beyond fight or flight or feed or fornicate. <laughs> responses, instinctual gut level responses to fear that have grown into the strangling ten tentacles, if you will, of chauvinism. Those principles literally infecting your raw materials, mm -hmm. and your beliefs and your attitudes, your thoughts and your feelings, your choices and your decisions, colored so completely that you haven't been aware that there was an option. And you've reached a place in your conscious evolution that every single person on your planet is capable of being aware that there are other, ch other choices. And every single person on your planet is capable of making new choices. Now, many people don't know this, quote unquote, in their consciousness. It hasn't been presented in that way. Many people finding a spark inside themselves, reaching out to various expressions of spirituality, not even knowing why. 
and many people looking at your world, watching a news program on any given day. It's easy to despair. And chauvinism sits right on your shoulder, wanting you to do so. Chauvinism is not bad and wrong. It just doesn't work in a paradigm where you have conscious choice. It worked beautifully in a paradigm where you had only instinctual choice. But as you shift, as you become conscious beings, as you have conscious choice, the options, the possibilities, the parameters have literally changed. And your physical world hasn't quite caught up to that yet. There's a gap, if you will, a gap that can be bridged by conscious spiritual work, by the kind of information that you put out, both as an individual and as a teacher and an author, as one who inspires. Holding a light in the darkness, saying in the darkness, that you see in your world. It's easy to become despairing. It's easy to say the world's going to hell in a handbasket or various other phrases that people rubber stamp. It's easy to hide in your house in that sense, to want to avoid, to say there's nothing I can do about that anyway. And again, the principles of chauvinism coloring your choice. But like a candle in the darkness, uh, there are those of you, some without even realizing it, many very consciously at this point, working towards that transition of changing a paradigm through exploration, through self-examination, through self-awareness, you light a candle in the darkness. A candle that others can see, that others can come to. A candle that says, it's possible to do this a different way. You don't have to be a slave to domination. You don't have to believe that fight or flight is the only choice. You don't have to experience a world where there's only so much to go around and you've got to fight to get yours. There is an entire new paradigm available, a paradigm that we refer to as dominion. And the principles of dominion, there is an abundant universe that wants nothing but to give to you unlimited resource is available to every single person on the planet. When that sinks into your heart and you practice that, that reaching, that stretching, that going beyond the limitation of the physical gathering resource and bringing it back, it creates a whole new kind of paradigm, a whole new kind of security and safety, a whole new understanding of yourself, a new sense of love and compassion, an appreciation of your true value, a sense that you are loved just because you are not because you compete, not because you compare, not because you <laughs> beat somebody up. Because you are. But God, Goddess, loves you because you are. Not because of anything that you do, not because of anything that you accomplish, not because there's a big rule book that you're supposed to follow and your idea is to follow it. <laughs> but to take the responsibility, true responsibility, of creating your world from scratch. Not to fight against what you see out there already. To say, what do I want to create? What do I want to put in my world? When I get up in the morning, what do I want to feel? What do I want to experience? 
and that I can gather that resource and put it into my physical world. Eleanor, I hate to interrupt at this right. moment. I just got the two-minute sign. Right. Uh, maybe there's a few more things you could add. Our second show, you'll be focusing on the same wonderful topic. Indeed. And uh, so it will just continue for just a bit more. All right. Well, uh, to do a quick wrap-up. <laughs> yes. <gasps> Chauvinistic paradigm. Lack and limitation. Domination. an unwillingness to process one's conscious awareness or one's awareness consciously. That in your world literally directly results in the kind of conflicts you have currently mm -hmm. really big in the Middle East, certainly, in Africa, in your own United States, all over the world in various expressions. That's the big picture. But the same principles applying to your family interdynamics, your interaction, your interaction with your neighbors, if you will, your willingness to be consciously responsible for generating the reality that you live. Yes, I just got the one minute mark. Right. So I think uh, we'll be concluding this session. And I thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and love and insights on uh, this wonderful topic that we've been focusing on today right. and I might say to the audience that uh, again the name of this show is Living Wisdom I'm Patty Paul and if you'd like any more information about anything you've heard today the credits will have the contact information also I'm the author of a book called A New Spirituality Beyond Religion that has more information related to what we've been talking about today. So I want to thank the audience for their attention and I want to say goodbye until the next time. <laughs>